The ability to give effective feedback is an incredibly important and useful skill to learn. This is not only true in our professional lives, but also far more generally than that. Feedback comes in so many different forms that you often may not even recognise it for what it is. For example, as a scientist, we use the term critical analysis or peer review. Sporting team coaches evaluate player performances. But what about if your partner asks, do I look fat in this? How you respond is a form of feedback, and it's important to understand that how you provide that feedback will actually affect the outcome and whether or not they change their behaviour or change the product. For feedback to be effective, it must be specific, immediate, relevant and constructive. When, a given, when given a scenario of providing feedback on a peer presentation, many students initially responded that it was good. After I asked them to improve upon this assessment, on further reflection, the students' answers were more thoughtful. For example, Alfredo suggested that the different aspects of what was good could be identified, such as time management, visual aids, structure, body language, etc. Shane also noted that good could mean a lot of different things, so being specific would help. Laura said that good is just too general and doesn't in give an indication of if everything was good or which aspects were better than others. She also notes that this was a relative term and therefore not easily comparable between reviewers. I learned through this activity that students are also very hesitant to criticise each other. This suggested to me that they needed more practice in both giving and receiving constructive criticism. So constructive criticism has the sole purpose of improving the recipient's product, in this case, a presentation. There is sometimes even a potential kickback to you as the provider of that feedback, as you may benefit in some form from that improvement of the product or behaviour. Constructive criticism means that when you identify a weakness in something, you also provide a suggestion about how to improve it. Using my students again as an example, I ask them to improve on the following statement to make it constructive criticism. I couldn't understand him. Stephanie suggested that the person could perhaps speak a little slower or louder. Rachel put forward the idea that it maybe a summary sentence would be of benefit. Patrice suggested focusing on the specific aspect of what it was that made it difficult to understand, such as articulation, volume or structure. He also recognised that in a multicultural classroom or even world, we need to be aware and tolerant of different accents. And this may require us all to slow down our speech at times and ensure we're focusing on articulation and clarity of speech. Finally, it's also important to remember that feedback is designed to assist the recipient. Therefore, it's the recipient who must be the subject of the comment. It's possible to include a comment on your own personal opinion, but it must be followed by something that the recipient can work with.